The Irish government has been ramping up the energy performance requirement for buildings over the last decade or so and that's culminating in a new standard that a lot of people haven't heard about up to now called NZEB. NZEB stands for Nearly Zero Energy Buildings and the general idea of that is that buildings in the future will have to have such a small energy demand that most of their requirement can be provided from renewable resources such as photovoltaic panels. We're here in Enniscorthy in County Wexford to see an exemplary NZEB scheme. It's a scheme of 12 semi-detached houses, timber frame houses, and we're going to take you on a journey now right from the very foundations up into the roof insulation so you can see how it all pulls together. Right, step one, we've got to get the basics right and the, and the first point we're going to look at is insulation. We've got to have a really well insulated wall, roof and floor, get them all connected to reduce the space heating requirement in the winter time. So every NZEB home has to have a really good insulated envelope and we're here now at one of the external walls. For this project we're using a cellulose insulation which is a really good natural insulation and there's 190 millimetres of dense pack cellulose in this external wall. I've actually made a hole in the air tightness membrane here which kind of goes against the grain but if I reach in here you can see the depth of insulation that's there and this is all really good um, toxin free insulation. It's pumped in under pressure and you can see we have really a good effect here. The, the U value of this wall is 0 0.16 watts per meter square Kelvin which is actually not that much better than the building regulations so you don't have to go too far in terms of the external wall to achieve an NZEB home. We're really lucky here now to see a full cross section of the wall and um, so let's just have a little think about that. We've got our service cavity here which is insulated. We've got our timber frame section here about 190 millimetres of dense pack cellulose insulation. We have this super insulated triple glaze window frame and then on the very outside we have our external block leaf. We're upstairs in one of the bedrooms here and it's just interesting to see before the plasterboard goes on the ceiling we can see our airtight membrane here um, and we see we also have a service cavity on the ceiling so any of the electrical cables don't penetrate our airtight membrane and if you look very carefully you can get the impression that there's insulation in there literally pressing down on the membrane and we're going to have a look at that now. We're upstairs in the attic now obviously and on the topic of insulation here um, you lose a lot of heat typically through the roof so we want a really good insulation cover here. Again we're using cellulose and we have an incredible U-value here up here of 0 0.07 watts per meter square Kelvin. I'm literally knee deep in the stuff so this is going to ensure that there's practically no heat loss from the house upstairs through the attic. Having looked at the wall and the roof insulation we just need to finish off now by looking at the floor insulation. We've over 250 millimeters of foam insulation here giving us a U-value of around 0.08 watts per meter square Kelvin, which is going to give incredible comfort for the homeowner. So the second step towards NZEB is to think about air tightness. And on this particular project, we're going all out to achieve a really excellent level of air tightness and we're in a good location here to see the kind of materials that we can use. Um, this is a specially formulated board made in Ireland now which is specifically designed for air tightness. You can see we've taped up all the joints and you can see also that the, the board is taped to the floor. The floor is airtight, this board is airtight and then on the external wall we've used a different material here. I'm just going to take away this insulation and you can see here this is a special membrane which is airtight and which is also part of our vapour control layer. And this of course is taped to the board here in the corner and in turn on the reveal here we can see that the window is taped here at this joint. So everything is sealed up and nothing is left to chance. One of the big things about air tightness is you don't want any of the electrical services or plumbing uh, to penetrate your airtight layer or your vapour control layer. So we've built out here a service cavity. You can see here it's made with these wooden battens and all the pipes and services and conduits are external to that. So that's perfect. And then we come along later, we insulate it and then the plaster board will go here and the homeowner is unaware 
that what they've got here is a fully protected airtight shell for the life of the building. We're really proud of how airtight we're getting these buildings. We're getting them about 20 times tighter than you need for the current building regulations. Um, we're getting around 0 0.4 cubic meters per hour per meter squared in terms of permeability. And how do we know that? Well, we do that with an air tightness test, which we're going to show you now. In order to determine how airtight the building is, we have to do what's called a blow door test. And we do that with this equipment. We've got Gavin O'Shea here, who's an expert in testing airtight homes. Gavin is going to create now a 50 Pascal pressure difference between inside and outside. It's effectively like putting the house in a wind tunnel so we can quantify the air permeability of the envelope. And as the fan ramps up, you can see now that this membrane is being sucked into the house because we're putting the house under negative pressure. So creating a high performance home is all about quality assurance and everybody has to take responsibility. It's a kind of a team effort here. And we have to be very careful with these kind of tools here. If you're making a penetration for a cable or for a duct, you got to make sure that it's repaired afterwards. One of the things I love about this project here, we have an air tightness quality control station, and that kind of focuses everybody's mind on working to the same goal. And we, you can see we have a clipboard here for the, ele for the electrician, for the plumber, and so forth. And anybody who makes a hole or a penetration in the airtight layer has to record it here. It's no problem. We have to have penetrations. That's completely normal. And then we have a single air tightness champion, if you will, who goes around and seals up afterwards the holes. So we make sure that there's accountability at every level. Here we are in a finished house now. We can't see the membranes anymore. We can't see the airtight board anymore. We've got our electrical socket here. We know if the homeowner drills a hole here to hang a painting, they won't damage our airtight membrane because remember we have this service cavity behind it and it's all finished up, looks completely normal, but it's really bulletproof in terms of air tightness. So it's fantastic. We're literally out here in the trenches right now and this is a very appropriate place to start to talk about step three, which is all about reducing thermal bridges. So a thermal bridge is where you have an interruption of the insulation layer. And this is a classic location where you get a really quite a significant thermal bridge between the warm wall on the inside and the floor slab and the ground. So the ground is always around 10 or 12 degrees Celsius. So we need to create a separation between the heated envelope and the ground. And one of the ways we can do that is by using a special block this is called an aerated concrete block, and it's not like a normal concrete block. It's actually got quite a lot of insulating properties. And we'll show you in a few moments where that fits in the envelope and also where it fits in one of our special construction details. We saw the aerated concrete block earlier on in the foundation. Now we're going to see it in situ. This is a special detail here. Here's the aerated concrete block now. It's on the same plane as the insulation underneath the floor slab and this helps us to create a very low thermal bridge at this junction which will not only reduce the heating demand but also make sure that the edge of the floor slab is nice and warm bringing comfort to the homeowner. Another clever thermal bridge detail here is around the window frame. We can see the window is not going to sit up against solid wood. It's going to be surrounded by this foam insulation. And right in here at this junction, we're going to get insulation right into the extremities of the building so that we don't have any thermal bridging at the corners. Step four in creating a high performance NZ home has to look at the windows. We want really good windows. These look like ordinary windows, but they're far from it. We've got three panes of glass, so they're triple glazed. We've got a very special low conductivity spacer bar. There's no aluminium in the spacer bar. These frames are actually full of insulation as well. So in combination, the total U value here is around 0.74 watts per meter square Kelvin. So that's more than twice as good as your standard double glaze window. And because it had to give very good comfort for the homeowner, you don't feel any cold coming off the window. And there's another benefit in terms of aural comfort. If we just listen here now, there's some machinery operating outside. We're on a construction site here now. So you weren't able to hear that previously now. 
And when I close the window there, you can see it. So we're locking out the cold and we're also locking out the noise. Fantastic. Step five is all about ventilation. And we've got two choices here generally. We can have a hole in the wall ventilation or trickle vents in the window, or in this case, we're going for a mechanical ventilation system because we've sealed up the building so well. So we've got a mechanical ventilation with heat, with heat recovery, which we'll talk about later. And we're in a great place here now. We're actually in the kitchen of this house. And the register above me here is the extract from the kitchen. So this uh, register here is going to take out all of the wet, humid, smelly air from the kitchen and send it back to the heat recovery unit. And then over here, looking upstairs, we're supplying fresh air to all the living rooms, the bedrooms, and in this case, we're looking at uh, a supply point to an upstairs bedroom. So we've got extract from wet rooms, we've got supply to living rooms, and this ventilation system is on all day, every day, and it goes back to a manifold, which we'll have a look at now. So we've got a network of ducts running around the house which will be completely invisible, one for supply zones, one for extract zones, and they all come back eventually to these two manifold boxes here. And these manifold boxes connect in to the centralised ventilation system which we'll have a look at in a completed house right now. We're very lucky actually to see this wonderful piece of equipment here. We've taken the cover off it so you can see it all. It's really what we call a magic box. It's got all the technology that a high performance home needs. It's got the hot water tank down at the bottom. This green thing here is the heat exchanger which I'll explain in a moment. And this here, this coil here is, is your heating coil. So this one piece of equipment replaces a lot of other pieces of equipment that we normally have in our homes. This does your ventilation it does your heating and it does your hot water, all in one plug and play solution. So it's really a game changer in high performance homes. The very core of this machine is this green unit here. This is called an air to air heat exchanger. And basically what happens is you've got the cold air coming in from outside, which would be uncomfortable. And you've got the exhaust air coming from the bathrooms and the kitchen. And the heat in the exhaust air is exchanged to the cold air path coming in. We don't get any mixing of the air path, so there's no sick building syndrome, but what you do is you get pretty much a free tempering of the fresh air before it comes into the house. Here we've progressed along a bit now. We're in a kitchen which is practically finished. This is the extract register here now. You can't see the ducts anymore, of course, so the, to the homeowner, it just looks like a normal kitchen. And just a small point, we have the extract here now, which is going to be over the cooking surface. And here we don't connect this to the ventilation equipment because we don't want oils and fats in the ducts. Um, so in this case, we just have a recirculating hood which takes away all the smells from the kitchen. We talked about extract from the kitchen. It's also very important that we supply fresh air to the living rooms. In this case, we're in the dining room here and this is the supply register. So this is supplying fresh air and it's actually on right now and you can barely feel it. It's a trickle. You certainly can't hear it. And this is supplying fresh air which has been filtered and which has been tempered. So it's keeping the humidity at a really nice level and also keeping the air fresh and turning over so we've got a low carbon dioxide level. So it's, this is fantastic now. We have a whole balanced ventilation system between extract and supply. This is what the finished product is like. This is the utility room all finished now. And here we have the ventilation equipment which has your hot water tank and the heat exchanger here. And the homeowner has nothing to do except to change the filters. And to do that, you just reach up here, pull out the filter like this. And you can see actually it's already a little bit dirty. You change that out and pop it back in. It takes about two minutes. It's as easy as putting something in a microwave. And that's all the homeowner has to do. In terms of controls in this house, this is it, guys. Couldn't be simpler. It's like a smartphone interface. It's a very visual display. What's the indoor temperature? What's the outdoor temperature and so forth? And really. There's very little for the homeowner to do here in these kind of houses. All you have to do is live here. Now remember, most of the heat that we need for these houses is provided through the ventilation air. But just as a backup, we have two radiators. That's all. Very small and very compact. To be honest with you, my prediction is they're going to be bored silly because we'll never need them. Because we only need two radiators, we actually don't have one here in the bedroom. 
This is a supply register here. It's giving us loads of fresh air for this bedroom, but it's also providing the heat that we need. So we've less clutter, more space. I have to show you this space here. This would normally be the hot press, but if you remember, the hot water tank is actually part of the magic box that we saw downstairs. So we have a bit of extra space now in this NZ home. And what we're going to propose this is used for is an airing cupboard. And how this works is we have an extract register here in the space, which will suck the humid air out of this room and help you dry your clothes overnight. One of the main sources of condensation and humidity in your conventional house is from the shower in the bathroom. Typically they're not that well ventilated. This won't be a problem here because in the shower cubicle, again, we have a register, an extract register. This is going down to the heat recovery box downstairs. So every time you take a shower, the heat from the water is actually being used to heat the cold air coming into the house. So we're, we're reducing our heating energy demand and we're eliminating any risk of condensation in the bathrooms. We've got a super insulated house, it's air sealed, there's no thermal bridges, we've got triple glazed windows, a mechanical ventilation system, a small backup heating system, and now finally we're at step seven where we have renewable energy technology. We're putting photovoltaic panels here on the roof, they're going to generate electricity for free from the sun and this is what allows us to have A1 for this project. If you think about solar electricity, it's fantastic we can produce it here. We don't have to import coal or oil or gas. So I believe we're heading to an era of the all-electric home where we can make our own electricity. That electricity then powers the mechanical ventilation system and that small trickle of heat we need. And we can finally really have a truly sustainable uh, carbon-free economy here in Ireland. Well that concludes our tour of these NZ homes. We've seen everything right from the foundations to the roof insulation and the renewable energy systems. I think what's amazing is that these houses were built in 13 weeks and they're also affordable so this is not something for the elite. In fact eight of these 12 houses have been bought as social houses for Wexford County Council so it's great for the occupants. They're going to have really good comfort, tiny tiny energy bills and really we don't need to be fearful of NZEB. NZEB is coming very, very quickly now. We've got examples here of how to do it in a step-by-step -step way. You can also build them with uh, other methods if you like, like block work, for example, so you don't have to build them in timber frame. Also, these houses are certified passive houses. So all people have to do now is to move in here and enjoy the benefits of going NZEB.